The following program has been sponsored by generous friends and partners of Fred Jordan Missions. Sometimes it takes history a long time to reveal where you get your strength. Welcome to the Fred Jordan Mission, downtown Los Angeles. There are so many exciting updates to share with you today. Plus, Joe has a word of encouragement for us today. Let's go see what he's going to be talking about. Hey, Joe. Yeah, I, I was just so coming so from the kitchen, right, and hey, oh my goodness, how Good are you? you? Good to see you. How are you? Good. I was just coming from the kitchen. Have you been in the kitchen? It's amazing. Oh, that salmon and vegetables look wonderful. I mean, no, it's, it's how amazing. we do on Skid Row. Yeah, we do it right. You know, and you know what we do best at Fred Jordan Mission? We share the love of Jesus and how much Jesus loves people, but we also demonstrate his love by meeting their needs, and the needs are great and especially people who are hungry. So we love feeding great food. We do, we do, and we served it up right today. Well, you have a word of encouragement, so what are we gonna hear today? Yeah, just, just lift the our importance spirits. of serving others. Mm. You know, the key to me is seeing the need mm. of somebody or something. You know, I'm gonna talk a little bit today about a kid that I raised really through our kids program out in the Coachella Valley since he was 10, who's now calling me at over 30 years old because his marriage is in disarray. And he's like, Pastor Joe, but he also calls Chris and I dad and mom. He says, Pastor Joe, dad, I, I need your help because I helped bury his dad like three years ago. And like, I'm his dad, you know, and spiritual father. So I'm gonna talk about that and just the needs of people, the need for food and clothing and shelter. And you know, we, we have a lot of friends here on Skid Row and stuff whether they're ladies or men, and sometimes they'll walk right by you naked. Yes. And they have nothing, yeah. literally nothing. So we wanna put clothes on them. So I'm gonna talk about that, how we serve our fellow mankind, our neighbors, in Jesus' name every day. Such a good word. And I know we're all in need of that, so don't you go anywhere more with Joe Jordan right when we get back. Today as we look all around, no matter where we are in life, more than ever we see needs, great needs, hopeless, hurting, desperate people. And what we would typically see on the streets of Skid Row, we are now seeing in every city, every community, and in every neighborhood. Hunger is no respecter of persons. Willie Jordan says, hunger never takes a day off. For those of you during this unprecedented time of history who are doing good, then we ask that you would generously give to those who are not as fortunate. So many from all walks of life are hurting. Will you extend a hand of mercy to help them in their greatest time of need? Your most generous gift is needed. Go online to give fjm.org. Whatever the amount, great or small, your donation is greatly appreciated. Today I want to share with you from Matthew chapter 25. It's a parable 
It's a parable that talks about how we, as human beings and Christians, can love others who are in need, serve others who have needs, and show mercy to those who need mercy. You know, I stand here on the corner at Fifth and Town on Skid Row in LA, and all around me, everywhere, there are needs. There are needs of men, women, children, who we serve every day. And you know, I just wanna encourage you as the viewer, maybe you have needs even, because all of us have needs at some point, but I wanna encourage you to step out of the box maybe, to step out of your comfort zone if you haven't already, and be a part of touching others' lives who are suffering right now, who are in need right now, whether it's food insecurities, job insecurities, financial insecurities, it could be relationship problems, which I'm gonna talk with you something about today. It doesn't matter what you're suffering with or who around you is suffering with something, we, we can encourage and we can love and show mercy and grace to others. As we look at Matthew 25, 37, it says this, then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick? Or when did we see you in prison and come visit you? And the king will answer them saying, assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did these things to the least of these my brethren you did it for me you know here in this passage it talks about how people were hungry and they were fed how they were thirsty and they were given drink how they were naked and they were clothed or how they were alone afraid and imprisoned and they visited them as the body of Christ, as those who love Jesus and follow Jesus, these are all the things that Jesus did in caring for people and their needs. Yes, Jesus shared about the kingdom of heaven to come. He shared about the plan of God and salvation that was the free gift that he would give his life on the cross for those who would believe. But he also cared about the needs of people. And you know, for me, I see more needs than I've ever seen in my life. And the more needs I see, whether it's here on Skid Row or a block away or a tent away, if it's a city away or a county away, in the Coachella Valley, it doesn't matter. I see needs all around me. And it moves my heart towards more compassion, towards more mercy, more grace, and more love for others. You see, I want to be a difference. And I want to make a difference. And I want to encourage you today that you make a difference. You can make a difference or continue to make a difference. The people around us, they're just fellow human beings, fellow citizens. They're just people. And yet, it doesn't matter if you live in a house behind a gated wall, if you live in a cardboard box or in a tent, we're all just people. Some have shelter, some don't. Some have food, some don't. Some have greater needs than others. Some have jobs, some don't. But I want you to know that no matter what your circumstance is, you can make a difference. And you say, well, for those who have money, for those who have the ability and the resources, yeah, they can give or they can do things. If they don't work and they have time on their hands, they can you know, be of service by volunteering. But you know what, you don't need money and you don't need just a lot of time on your hands to serve. You could take an hour out of your day a week and come to the Fred Jordan Mission or your church or a community center or just go to your neighbors that you know need help and love on them. Show mercy and grace and let them know that they're loved and that you care about their needs because there's needs everywhere. You know, if you do have resources, that's great. You can give. But there's nothing better than touching hand to hand, seeing eye to eye, with someone in need and saying, are you hungry? Let me feed you. Are you thirsty? Here's a drink. If you're cold or you need a blanket or you're naked, 
here's some clothes or a jacket to put on you or a blanket to wrap around you. You know, we're able to do that at Fred Jordan Mission every day and have for 76 years. But you know, I wanna tell you a story about a man that just really touched my heart. I interviewed him a few years ago that lives right here on these streets. Well, he lived here until just recently and I'll tell you the story. There was a man who was a great military man. He served in our armed forces. He served our country to protect us and to keep us free. After he came back from serving in the military, he found himself without a job, without money, and living on the streets here of Skid Row. He lived in a tent, kind of like the ones behind me, but on the other side of town. This man was so generous and so kind so sweet, and he cared about his fellow citizens. You see, these are all my fellow citizens. They're your fellow citizens. Just because you live on Skid Row, just because you don't have on Skid Row what others have other places, that doesn't mean that they're not citizens. It doesn't mean they're not fellow human beings. You see, they're just brothers and sisters of somebody. They're moms and dads. They're children of somebody's. And this man, who lived on the streets after serving his country, found himself with no place to live except Skid Row and a tent. And this man had nothing, but you know what he did have? He had a heart of compassion. Compassion towards those who lived on the streets too. And this man went out of his way to serve his fellow brothers and sisters on Skid Row by serving them when they had needs. And I'll finish sharing that story in just a minute. Here at Fred Jordan Missions every day, we see all, all types of people. I remember as a kid, my father Fred and my mom Willie teaching me a song about Jesus loves the little children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, we are all precious in God's sight. I still know that song, I taught it to my children, and that's exactly what we see here at Fred Jordan Mission every day. Red and yellow, black and white. Every single person that you could think of, from children all the way to seniors, are here on the streets living in LA. And they come to our doors to be loved on, to be shared with that Jesus loves you and Jesus saves. You know, we hand out water, we hand out drinks, we hand out snacks, we preach the gospel, we have hot meals, we do special events. But if you wanna know who comes through our doors, it's all of us. There's no certain person, there's no certain look. But like I said in that song, red and yellow, black and white, we're all precious in God's sight. That's who we see here every day at Fred Jordan Mission. People from all around this country that end up on these streets can come through our door and we will serve them as we declare and demonstrate the love of Jesus to those in need. Brock, we've been friends for, I don't know, just a couple of years. Right? I've been, lived in the area eight, so I feel like okay. you're basically my first best friend, so. <laughs> you're a, yeah. youth, a youth minister, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is it important to pour into our youth? I think especially with this generation right now, there's a lot of stuff that's like, hey, myself, 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 myself. And, and like, it's important, like you have to, you have to love yourself. I 100% believe that. Right. But when you go out and you serve people, something happens that is completely unexplainable that you, that you cannot get any other right. way. So when you have kids and they come out and they serve, are you seeing a change in them when they actually shake the hand of somebody that's in need or, or when they're delivering a food box? Night and day. You, you have students who, um, just to be honest, are sometimes a little, maybe a little stuck up, maybe they're a little um, uh, full of themselves and they come out and they do something like that. And when you look somebody eye to eye, you hand them a box, you shake their hand, some, it, I, I don't know, something happens and you, right. I don't even know if you can really explain it, but there's a change of heart that happens. Absolutely. Um, and I think it's so important. It's not just a one time, it's cons that consistent thing because I do believe you have to you have to keep engaged with consistent serving, yes. not just a drop it and help. So. And that was one of the things my mom always taught us growing up that when you shake the hand of somebody yeah. that's in need, you never forget their no. face. You never know what somebody is going through. You don't know how close somebody is to coming into a relationship with Jesus and, and that handshake, that serving opportunity can be the very thing that tips them over into relationship with Jesus. And right there, I'm like, that's good enough for me. And can we just be honest for two seconds? Selfishly, 
you feel fantastic. You Absolutely. really do. You really do. They did a study I literally just saw the other day that they said scientists believe that it's actually better mentally to give than to receive yeah. something. And I was like, that's hilarious because I think Jesus said that. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah. but it's crazy. You know what I mean? So it, it, you never know what people are going through. And when we can show up and be Jesus to people, I think it can change literally everything. Awesome. I'm excited you're here. Thanks. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to serve alongside of you again. Appreciate it. Join the conversation by connecting with us on social media. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. Visit us at social.fjm.org. As I was sharing with you just a few minutes ago, the man who lived in a tent just across the street was a kind and generous man who cared about those who lived on the streets. You say, well, Joe, he didn't have anything. Like, he didn't have the mission of food bank. He didn't have donors and things to support him. And what could he really do? Well, I'll tell you, one day he went around to all the businesses and there's a lot of fish markets around and things. He had a really nice camp stove and he would cook for the homeless, his friends and neighbors. He didn't know some of them, but they all loved him because he was such a generous man. And again, he didn't really have anything, but anything he had, he shared it. I mean, I remember when there was someone cold coming by that just got into town in the winter time and he gave up his blanket and he didn't have one. Well, good thing we heard about it because then we gave him a couple more from Fred Jordan Missions so that he could be warm. And I'm sure he shared those even with someone else. But he went around to the seafood uh, places that provide all the seafood to all the restaurants and he got lobster and shrimp. He got all of this food and he did this big boil and this big barbecue. And, and there was video taken by one of our staff where he served all of the homeless friends, anybody who wanted to come from anywhere around come out of their tent, come out of their cardboard box. And they came and they ate lobster and they ate shrimp. And he made this feast for them because he was a great cook from the South. What are you about to serve? Everybody got to eat. Everybody got to eat. Thank you, thank you. Well, just, if nobody give, nobody have anything. And if God didn't give us life, we would have it. It was an amazing story how someone who had nothing, still had enough love for Jesus and enough love for others. You see, we can't be saved by our deeds, only saved by faith in Jesus and Jesus alone, the Bible tells us. But also, if our faith doesn't show some good deeds and good works and how to serve others, then our faith is maybe a little bit dead. And so seeing this man love Jesus, serve the military, come back and basically be discarded to end up on Skid Row just to give back to his fellow mankind and those human beings that live on the streets. You know, they're not just statistics. They're not just homeless people. These are our neighbors. These are again, someone's children and parents. These are friends. These are who we serve in Jesus' name and always have. And this man served them even though he had nothing. If a man who lives on Skid Row can serve those on Skid Row and bless them and show acts of kindness and mercy, how much more can some of us do? And that's why Fred Jordan Mission is here every day serving those in need in Jesus' name. You know, the parable here in Matthew 25 describes acts of love and mercy and what we can do every day. And these acts don't depend, like I said earlier, on wealth. They don't depend on ability. And they don't even depend on our intelligence. Anybody can do an act of service. Anyone can reach out and touch a life in need. And these acts are freely given and freely received. You know, we can do our part and not neglect the needs of others if we'll just put our mind to it and some focus to it and do our part. I say it like this, I can do a good thing and you can do a good thing and others can. But together, if we all come together, we can truly do extraordinary things to touch the lives of those who have needs every day. I don't know about you, but I wanna continue as a ministry and as a man who loves Jesus with all his heart to touch lives in Jesus' name. I wanna to continue to see partners like you come on board or partners that we already have come on board so that we can do more and reach more. We have great volunteers. Today we had just tremendous event, drive through food distribution and then all of our homeless guests came through. 
We had volunteers, some from Orange County, some from LA, some from San Bernardino. They all came and they gave their time today to serve those in need in Jesus' name. There's nothing more rewarding. Give your time, give your talents, give your resources, whatever you can do, do it in Jesus' name and touch a life and a soul because it could mean eternity. You know, as we do what we do on Skid Row, I think of others. I think of others like this young man that I want to say he's a boy because I started working with him when he was 11 years old. What a tremendous young man. Taught him John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Now he calls me dad and Pastor Joe and, you know, he's such a special young, young man. Now he's in his 30s and he has a family. And I've mentored him and prayed with him and discipled him over all these years. And he didn't come from the best neighborhood. He didn't come from the, really the most solid family. He didn't come from a Christian home, yet he's following Jesus today over 20 years later and trying to lead his children and his wife that way. But he called me just the other day and he was crying and weeping. And he said, Dad, I need your help. And I said, what's wrong? What's wrong? And he told me about how COVID and the lockdown and where he lived caused the family and his spouse to be very discouraged and distraught, to be in despair that was causing friction with the children and, and the marriage and everything else. And you know, there's nothing worse, nothing worse than seeing a young family, any family, but a young family trying to do right, trying to serve God, work hard, raise their kids in the Lord, and then see discouragement turn into despair. And not just that, but then turn into depression. I prayed with this young man and my heart broke for him because here he is saying, I love her, I love my wife, I love her. And yet she's so lost and lonely right now, she won't even let me in. And I said, you're just gonna have to be an example. Just be the man of God, God's called you to be. Support her, love her, pray for her, but don't push her, don't force her. You have to let her be, be one who comes out of that shell of depression. And I think if you love her and you take care of her and the kids and you're just there for her, but don't say things like, you know, what's wrong with you? You're better than this. You can just break through this because depression is real. And I told this young man, just continue to love her, show love to her, mercy to her, extra grace to her. Just be kind and patient with her and trust Jesus. And Jesus can bring her out of this and restore your marriage and everything else. He was so grateful for the words and the, and the encouragement I gave him. And we're just praying for him one day at a time that that depression breaks and they come out of it. But there's many of you today that might be discouraged or depressed in depression. But I want you to know God's bigger than that. Like I've said a million times, God's bigger than COVID-19. He's bigger than cancer. He's bigger than mental illness. He's bigger than depression. He's bigger than discouragement. He's bigger than money problems and financial and job problems. God is greater than all of that. But we have to place our faith and trust in Him. You know, as we look at this, we can see that we really can't make excuses as people not to help those in need and serve those. There's no excuse. There are deep needs and great needs all around us. And we just have to do our part. If we just do a small part, we can make a big difference. We can't rely on the government to take care of it. We can't even rely on just the church to take care of it. We as individuals, we as followers of Jesus need to just step out every day by faith to serve those around us and care for others. And you know, sometimes as our responsibility is to Jesus, to care for others, we have to look past ourselves and what we're going through because someone is always going through something more difficult than we are. Look to the needs of others 
Look to those who are suffering around you, how you can touch them, pray for them, or meet their needs, whether it's giving them a drink if they're thirsty, feeding them if they're hungry, clothing them if they're naked, or just loving them when they're discouraged and scared and lonely. You know, it was just a couple days ago that we did a big outreach in the Coachella Valley and I shared the gospel. And after a man and a family drove up in a car and this man came out and gave me a fist pump. He was probably 60 years old, his family in the car, kids in the car. And he started weeping, I mean weeping and crying. And I didn't know why. And this man said, thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor, for sharing that God loves me no matter what. Thank you for sharing with me that God loves me, e e even though I'm going through all of this. Thank you for letting me know that God cares about my fears and my worries. Thank you that he's bigger than coronavirus. Thank you that he's bigger than all of my financial problems. But most of all, Pastor, thank you for telling me about the gospel message because I gave my life to Christ and I know that I know that if I'm gone tomorrow, I'll be with Jesus because he forgave me and my family received Jesus and we have now forgiveness of our sins. It was so powerful. I started weeping because there's nothing better than seeing someone desperate come not just for food, but to be fed by Jesus and changed for eternity. And you know what? Every day we get to do that here on Skid Row and in the Coachella Valley. This is an important parable, the importance of serving others where service is needed and serving people in Jesus' name. Loving and serving others glorifies God and also reflects our love for Jesus. We've been doing it for 76 years. We will continue. But I wanna encourage you, whether you're part of Fred Jordan Mission or not, serve those around you in Jesus' name. Whatever you can do makes a difference. Show love, mercy, and grace to those in need and watch how your life can help change someone else's in Jesus name. God bless you. you join us in feeding hungry children and their families by phoning today 844-FJM-FOOD or donating online fjm.org. That's fjm.org. Or mail your check to Fred Jordan Mission, P.O. Box 12345, Covina, California, 91722. Please, will you help? Reach for The preceding program was sponsored by generous friends and partners of Fred Jordan Missions.